Hi everyone! I wanted to give you all an update on the linoleum cut I've been working on this summer. As you know, I finished the first 8-foot block a couple weeks ago, and I want to show you what's next, but first I'm going to give you a little backstory. A couple years ago, I was accepted as the artist-in-residence to the Agate Fossil Beds National Monument, which is about 150 miles south of Rapid City, South Dakota, in Nebraska. It is the site of a major trove of mammal fossils from the Miocene period, which is about 40 million years after dinosaurs and 2 or 3 million years before anything like humans. While there, I drew on site and came up with a plan for a WPA mural-like linocut that describes the history of the park. A few months later, I sent a full-size set of working drawings to the park for exhibition and then started the long process of transferring photocopies of the drawings to linoleum with carbon paper, and then carving the block. With the first block finished, I spent last week of my partial furlough printing a copy and transferring the ink from that copy onto two new blocks. The idea is that the final print will be what's known as a chiaroscuro print. These two to three color prints were popular in the 16th century and give an impression of light and shadow, like this landscape by the Dutch artist Goltzius. Since I now have one print of the key block for the transfer, I thought I'd take you through it and uh, tell you a little bit about the site at Agate. The first section is called Cook's Discovery. In the early 1890s, ranchers James and Kate Cook found a scattering of petrified bones while they were out for a ride. Cook contacted Professor Irwin Barber at the University of Nebraska. He had met Barber while working for the U.S. Geological Survey. Cook had acted as a negotiator and translator between the survey and the local Native American tribes that Cook had befriended. Coincidentally, Barber was from the Cincinnati area. He studied at Yale under the famed fossil hunter O.C. Marsh, and then went out to Nebraska. Now, we'll move to the next section. There we go. This section is called Peterson's Lens. Barber was initially investigating what he called the Devil's Corkscrews, which turned out to be ancient prairie dog dens. And in the meantime, another researcher, O.A. Peterson of the Carnegie Museum investigated the petrified bones that James and Kate had found. He discovered a wealth of mammal fossils from 23 million years ago. So we'll move to the next section. This section is called Quarrying University Hill. Barbara and Peterson's excavations soon led other institutions to send their own expeditions to find early mammal bones. The University of Nebraska and Carnegie Museum were soon joined by paleontologists from the National Museum in Washington, the American Museum in New York, as well as faculty and students from Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and Amherst College. Here you can see Kate Wellspring, the former curator of the natural history collections at Amherst College, where my wife Susan works, showing off some of the finds from their 1919 expedition. And we'll move to the next section. There we go. Now this section is called the Museum's Riches. The fossils these researchers found made their way to, into collections across the country. At the University of Nebraska, artist Carrie Barber, Irwin's sister, left her career as a sculpture professor to become one of the first women museum preparators in the country, cleaning and assembling the fossils for research and display. Here's another photo of Carrie Barber in her Sunday best cleaning fossils for a newspaper article. Uh, Carrie became an expert in mounting fossil bones, and the American Museum consulted her quite a bit for their own uh, exhibitions. So she was not only one of the first women preparators, but she was one of the more important preparators uh, in museum history. The fossils brought back to Amherst were examined in the 1970s by Professor Marjorie Coombs, who used them to create a genealogy of the various species of Meropus, a large clawed herbivore that ranged from Oregon to Florida. 
and we'll do the last section. You can see Marjorie's genealogies that she's putting together based on the fossil claws. And then we have this final bit here. As the study of paleontology became interested in not only what animals lived in the past, but how they lived, researchers decided to return to the field to see what evidence they could find of ancient habitats. In the 1980s, Professor Robert Hunt and his team from the University of Nebraska returned to the site where A.O. Peterson discovered bones of the long-extinct bear dog. Sure enough, they discovered when they dug down further that there was evidence of the bear dog's underground lair. As this evidence is displayed and cataloged in the museum, who knows what other information new paleontologists may discover. You can see here a young paleontologist being inspired by the bear dog, and who knows what material she may find in the future. So that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and um, stay tuned.